Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're back once again with another amazing science tutorial video. And in this video, we're going to be looking at prokaryotic cells versus eukaryotic cells. So let's begin. There are two major types of cells. We have prokaryotic cells, and pro means before a true nucleus. That's the biggest difference between a prokaryotic cell and a eukaryotic cell. A prokaryotic cell doesn't have a true nucleus. A eukaryotic cell does. And let's look at those characteristics of a prokaryotic cell. They have a nucleoid, which does not have a nuclear membrane. And they have circular DNA that floats freely around the cell. Their DNA is not contained inside of a nucleus. Their DNA is simpler than eukaryotes. They have no membrane-bound organelles, so their organelles don't have a membrane that surrounds or protects them. They're typically much smaller than eukaryotic cells, and they divide or reproduce by binary fission. And they're typically unicellular, which means that they, only, they usually only have one cell. And they can survive through anaerobic or aerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration means they can survive without oxygen. Aerobic respiration means they, can, they need oxygen in order to survive. So now let's look at our eukaryotic cells. U means true for a true nucleus. So eukaryotic cells do have a true nucleus. And like we said earlier, there's a the biggest difference between a prokaryotic cell and a eukaryotic cell. So if we look at some of the characteristics of eukaryotic cells. They do have a true nucleus that's contained in the middle of the cell. They have linear DNA that is located in the nucleus and their DNA is neatly organized. The DNA is more complex than prokaryotes DNA and they have membrane bound organelles. So that means each organelle has a membrane that protects it and allows it to perform its specific function without other organelles interfering with it. And a eukaryotic cell is much larger than prokaryotic cells. And they divide and reproduce by mitosis when they make body cells or through meiosis when we talk about sex cells. And they are usually multicellular, which means that they usually have more than one cell. And they require aerobic respiration, which means that they need oxygen in order to survive and perform their daily functions. So we look at a prokaryotic versus eukaryotic cells breakdown. We have what is different about each one of them, but let's see what they both have in common. Both of them have chromosomes, and both of them have DNA as their genetic material. They both have ribosomes, which ribosomes make proteins for them. They both have cytoplasm, which is the jelly-like substance that contains those or their organelles. They both have a plasma membrane, and they both sometimes have cell walls, and eukaryotic cells Plant cells have cell walls. Animal cells do not have cell walls. And then both of them contain vacuoles. Now it's time for your first check for understanding. And in this check for understanding, you're going to write whether the cell is prokaryotic or eukaryotic or both based upon the description. You have two minutes to answer the following questions, and those two minutes begin now. Now let's check and see how you did on this one. So let's look at number one. Number one, has membrane-bound organelles, that's going to be eukaryotic. Number two, cell division occurs by mitosis or meiosis, that's going to be eukaryotic, and I just put EU as the abbreviation. Number three, no true nucleus, that's going to be a prokaryotic cell. Number four, complex DNA, eukaryotic cell. Number five, has ribosomes, both of them have ribosomes. Number six, usually it's one cell. That's going to be a prokaryotic cell, and I put pro for the abbreviation. Number seven, DNA is genetic material. That's going to be both. Number eight, requires oxygen to survive or aerobic respiration. That's going to be a eukaryotic cell. Number nine, DNA is circular, prokaryotic cell. Number 10, DNA floats freely in the cell. That's going to be prokaryotic. Number 11, has a membrane, has a plasma membrane. Both of them do. Number 12, DNA is linear and located in the nucleus. That's going to be a eukaryotic cell. Number 13, can have anaerobic and aerobic respiration. That's a prokaryotic cell. Number 14, usually much smaller, prokaryotic cell. Number 15, contains cytoplasm. Both of the cells contain cytoplasm. Number 16, usually is made of more than one cell. That's going to be a eukaryotic cell. Let's continue. Now let's take a look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of being a prokaryotic cell. So let's start off with those advantages. They have fast reproduction. They're able to achieve this because they don't need a mate or a partner in order to reproduce. They reproduce through binary fission, which literally means that they're actually making copies of themselves. 
And since they're able to make copies of themselves without requiring a mate, they're able to multiply and grow their population very quickly. They have quick mutation and adaptation to new environments. So their DNA is freely floating. And since their DNA is freely floating and not contained inside of a nucleus, their DNA is able to mutate or change and adapt to new environments. And then they are the largest population of organisms on the planet due to their fast reproduction, their quick mutation, and their adaptation abilities. So now let's take a look at the disadvantages. Mutations can randomly occur since there is no membrane-bound nucleus containing the DNA. So mutations can be good for them. It helps them adapt to new environments. But when you have random mutations, it can actually damage that prokaryotic cell itself. And then there is little genetic variation in the population. So one thing can wipe most of that population out. So for example, if someone wants to get a bacterial infection, they can take antibacterial medication in order to wipe out that population of bacteria. Since there is no genetic variation or differences or very few, that means that bacteria population is going to be wiped out just by using that one medication. And then also all organelles work in the same place. They don't have a separate space to work in. Since their organelles don't have membranes around them, all their organelles are going to be working inside the same fluid. It's almost like five teachers teaching five different classes in the same room. There is no distinct classroom for them to be in. So once again, all those organelles work in the same space, which can be a little messy. So now let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of being a eukaryotic cell. Some of the advantages are the DNA is neatly organized and stored in the nucleus. There's less chance of random mutations due to protection of the genetic code. They're highly organized where each cell organelle can perform their job without interruption due to membranes around them. So their cell, a eukaryotic cell, has membranes around their organelles, which allows the organelles to work in peace and to produce their products without being interrupted by other organelles or outside environments. The cell complexity, they have different organelles that work together to perform tasks to help the cell function and be productive. So this is like a team. Every part of the team has a specific job and a specific function to help the team work effectively and efficiently. Let's look at some of those disadvantages. It takes longer to mutate or adapt to new environments. So the, since the DNA is protected in the nucleus, it takes much longer for the DNA to actually change or mutate to adapt to that new environment. And if one organelle is malfunctioning, then it will cause other organelles to malfunction and may ultimately destroy the cell. So this is kind of like the domino effect. All the organelles need to be functioning and working properly in order for the whole cell to survive. Let's take a look at your second check for understanding. And in this check for understanding, you're going to write whether the following descriptions are advantages or disadvantages of prokaryotic or eukaryotic cells. So we'll do number one together. Number one states it takes longer to mutate or adapt to a new environment. If it takes longer to adapt or mutate, that's going to be a disadvantage. So I'm going to put DIS right here, standing for disadvantage. Is that going to be a disadvantage of a prokaryotic or eukaryotic cells? Well, we know the prokaryotic cells DNA is freely floating, so it's easily easy for it to alter its DNA or for that DNA to mutate. So this is going to be a disadvantage of a eukaryotic cell because eukaryotic cells DNA is contained inside of a nucleus, which is harder to get to. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you have two minutes to answer the following questions, and I'll begin those two minutes starting now. Let's check and see how you did for the second check for understanding. So number two, quick mutation and adaptation to new environments, this is an advantage of prokaryotic cells. Number three, fast reproduction by binary fission. This is another advantage of a prokaryotic cell. Number four, DNA is neatly organized and stored in the nucleus. This is an advantage of a eukaryotic cell, and I abbreviate the U and the pro to keep it simple. Number five, largest population of organisms on the planet due to their fast reproduction, quick mutation, and adaptation abilities. This is an advantage of a prokaryotic cell. Number six, Highly organized where each cell organelle can perform the job without interruption due to membranes around them. This is an advantage of a eukaryotic cell. Number seven, if one organelle is malfunctioning, 
then we, it will cause other organelles to malfunction and may ultimately destroy the cell. This is a disadvantage of a eukaryotic cell. Number eight, mutations can randomly occur since there is no membrane-bound nucleus contained in the DNA. This is a disadvantage of a prokaryotic cell. Number nine, less chance of random mutations due to protection of the genetic code or the DNA inside the nucleus. This is going to be an advantage of a eukaryotic cell. And then number 10, a little genetic variation in the population. One thing can wipe out most of the population, just like I said, with the antibacterial medication. And this is going to be another disadvantage of prokaryotic cells. I hope this tutorial was helpful. I hope you was able to understand and learn the concepts. I am Travis Spivey, signing out with my son, Jordan Spivey. Peace, and y'all have a great day.